Hi, fifth graders. It's time for another Common Sense Media lesson. Today, we're going to learn how to protect our privacy by avoiding clickbait. After today's lesson, you will take a quiz to show what you know. So I want you to pay careful attention in our discussion through this video to learn what the definition of curiosity gap is, to be able to explain how clickbait uses that curiosity gap to get your attention, and to use strategies for avoiding clickbait. In our live lesson, we would be taking a vote on which of these headlines we would click first and we talk about why. So I'd like you to pause the video and think about which one you'd pick first and why. Then unpause when you're ready to move on. All of these are very clickable headlines. Each of them were created to try to get your attention. And they do this using something called the curiosity gap. The curiosity gap is the desire that people have to figure out missing information. For example, think about your favorite actor or singer. Have you ever wondered where they were born or what they like to do in their spare time? Why do you think you're interested in that? Well, it's because your mind doesn't like to have missing pieces or gaps in the things that we know about. So each of these headlines is making your brain think that there's a gap in something that you already know about. We're going to look at each of the headline examples and complete a table to explain how it shows the curiosity gap. So for the first one, go ahead and play that video game. It might actually be good for you. How does the headline refer to something you already know about? Well, most of us play video games, and it mentions that, so lots of people are interested in it. And what knowledge gap does this headline say it will fill? It says that video games can actually be good for you, and that would be surprising news to most people. In the next example, it says you should never brush your teeth without this trick. So the headline is referring to what that you already know about. Obviously, brushing your teeth. <laughs> Just about everybody is familiar with that one. Should be doing it twice a day. So what knowledge gap does the headline say it will fill? It says that it has a trick you should always do. So something new that you might not already know, this trick. The next headline said, 80% of kids love cupcakes. New study shows why. What does the headline refer to that you already know about? Yeah, kids are pretty familiar with cupcakes, right? A lot of kids like them. So what knowledge gap does the headline say it will fill? It says it's going to explain why kids like it so much. And finally, we have a picture of monkeys, and it says you won't believe this, the children's story that's actually true. What in the headline refers to something you already know about? Well, it mentions children's stories and it has a picture of monkeys. Most people are familiar with both of these topics and they might be wondering how the two things go together. Which leads me into the knowledge gap that it'll fill. Again, you might be wondering how the picture and the headline go together um, and which children's story is actually true. Lots of different kinds of headlines and images use the curiosity gap to try to get you to click on them, including many news sites, but not all are the same. Some are clickbait. So think, what do you think the word clickbait means? Well, it's a compound word made up of click, following a link on the internet, and bait, something used to get fish to bite on a hook. And these are clues to the meaning. Clickbait is an online image or headline that tries to get you to click on it. It's usually for advertising purposes, but it can be much worse. By getting you to bite on the hook or click the link, clickbait headlines help advertisers make more money. And when lots of people click on a link, an advertiser gets more traffic and can charge companies more money for their ads. It doesn't matter if the people who click find what they're looking for. In fact, when you click on clickbait, it can potentially lead you to sites you didn't want to go to, which is obviously confusing and frustrating. But worse than that, it could infect your device with computer viruses 
or it could lead to someone stealing your information. So there can be malware and other types of traps that get your personal info. So it, it can be very dangerous. So if you come across a headline that you think might be clickbait, avoid clicking it. Instead, do a search of the headline to see if there are other sources that provide the information you're looking for. Can we be real for a minute? You all are fifth graders. You cannot carry me in your pocket with you to the middle school or high school, but I hope you can take the knowledge that I give you and apply it in the rest of your life. So let's be real about clickbait for a minute. I fall victim to it sometimes too. I see an article, it applies to my curiosity gap, I click on it, and before I know it, I have to click to the next slide to figure out the more information, and then a little bit more of the story, and then click for a little bit more of the story. And I've basically wasted my time and seen a whole bunch of ads. That's mild clickbait, fortunately. The problem with clickbait is it's almost always age inappropriate for kids, and it can be potentially harmful to your computer, it can have malware um, and viruses. It can steal your identity. So you really need to be careful about these types of things. The internet has increased everybody's ability to publish content fairly inexpensively. And ad networks such as um, Google's AdSense, they allow websites to earn money off the number of clicks their ads receive. So this business model has completely changed the way that traditional news publishing models have worked. Um, traditionally, the ads support the news. But with this, the ad-supported networks make up content in order to get the clicks to run ads on it. It's a money-making scheme. And obviously, the more outrageous the stories, the more clicks that uh, they collect and the more money that they make. So let's talk about some major clues that something is clickbait. First of all, look at the headlines. Any bold claims such as, you won't believe what happened next, or um, try this genius trick, that's a red flag that it's clickbait, all right? Ignore it. If you see a weird GIF where it has an animated image that um, illustrates something unusual and that lures you into investigating it, it's probably clickbait. Don't waste your time. Any type of make money at home schemes, anything that promises you can make money without lifting a finger, that's fraudulent. It's probably going to cost you money. Don't click it. Any enticing photos, a scantily clad body, a disease, distorted images, these are all clickbait. They lead to nowhere good. Trust me, they are not appropriate for kids and they're going to waste your time or do more harmful things to your computer. Ignore them. Um, sales are another big one. If you search for things on the internet, your social media will give you ads based on those things. Um, sometimes they're great ads, sometimes they're clickbait. Don't click on ads that come up in your social media. If you want to look for something, do a search yourself. And finally, any contests or gimmicks, um, a slogan such as share this or you've won this or um, share this post because this celebrity wants to give $2,000 to the 100 people that share it first. No, all of that is gimmicks. It's too good to be true. Um, it's going to probably lead you to more clickbait and even worse, it might contain malware. Avoid it. If you do ever accidentally fall victim to clickbait, and it's making you feel really upset, please go talk to a grown-up that you trust and tell them about your feelings before and after you clicked on it because they can help you navigate that. Um, like I said, I am almost 40 years old. I fall victim to clickbait on occasion too, and I know better. So as kids, as you guys are figuring it out, you're going to make mistakes sometimes. But if you ever get in a really uncomfortable situation or you think that the clickbait has harmed your computer in some way, please go tell a grown-up right away. They're not going to be mad. They're going to appreciate that you owned up to your mistake, and they're going to help you through it. Sometimes it can be hard to tell if a headline is just clickbait or if it's something actually worth clicking, but there are a few things that you can look for. So let's put our new knowledge to the test here, and let's see if we can figure out if these articles would be clickbait or not. The first one says, man kisses a king cobra snake. You won't believe what happens next. Do you think it's clickbait? 
Yeah, it probably is. It seems impossible that someone would kiss a king cobra and not get bitten. Um, and the phrase, you won't believe what happens next, is trying to shock you. Number two says five pictures that prove this place has the most beautiful sunsets. Do you think it's clickbait? I would say probably not because it doesn't seem impossible or shocking and it offers specific information. Um, a th good thing to check before you click on it though is see what source it's coming from. Is it a reliable news source or is it a scam news source um, or a satire site? Number three says, want to see a new movie? Here are some of the top new releases. Do you think this is clickbait? I'd say probably not because it isn't impossible or shocking and it seems like it's going to provide specific information. Again, maybe just look at the site that it's coming from to see if it's a reliable news source before you click it. And number four says, remember the baby from Harry Potter? You would have never expected this. Do you think it's clickbait? Yeah, this one probably is clickbait. It's about a celebrity, it's trying to shock you, so those are good clues that it's clickbait. So I know when I was getting real with you, I gave you a lot of things to avoid, but I want you to focus on these three clues. If it seems impossible or unbelievable, avoid it, it's clickbait. And some examples would be, think your cat loves you, it's actually plotting to make you sick. Yeah, that's seems pretty unbelievable, so we shouldn't click it. Um, a second clue is that it's trying to shock you or appeal to your curiosity gap that we talked about at the beginning. The, you won't believe this, or the answer is genius. It's trying to make you think that there's something you don't know that's shocking. In real life, there is very rarely something that you don't know that's actually shocking. And the third clue I want you to remember is if it's referring to a celebrity or a popular topic, it's often clickbait. Um, for example, Taylor Swift talks selfies and bubble tea. You won't believe what she says. Um, they're trying to appeal to the people who are interested in those things or that's common to a lot of people. So it's typically a clickbait situation. Remember, most clickbait is for advertising purposes, but we need to protect our privacy because some clickbait can contain malware, um, viruses, it can steal your information um, or get you to submit personal information. So that's why we need to avoid it. Now it's time to show what you know. Click on the blue take the quiz button below, answer the questions and click the blue submit button. Then check your score. If you earned five points, you're done. But if you earned less than five points, you need to scroll through to look at qu which questions you missed and try again. You have three tries to earn all five points.